We can find on the market a lot of purpose-based dashcams lately and it is a trend to target the more and more demanding world of ride-sharing and Uber and taxi drivers. Blue Sky C comes up with an excellent dual-cam solution acting as a normal dashcam and at the same time recording all the events that happen inside the vehicle. B2W. And it's time to inspect. Hey, welcome everyone! tech for all channel here, it's me, Michael, and today we make a deep dive to the hardware, software and the overall performance of the new model of Blue Sky C. This is their second product ever, and for a very long time their first dashcam, the B1W, has been among the most recommended discrete dashcams and is a device that they still use on quite a regular basis because of its simplicity and reliability. Concerning their first generation, long-term operation was fine and hopefully the B2W will prove to be as durable as the older one. The device is dual-cam module and features front-facing and rear-facing lenses designed for mounting at the front of the vehicle. And the footage will cover the front view via the main lens and through the secondary one the driver, the passengers, the view out of the rear and the sides if there is direct visibility. I'll briefly guide you through the unboxing experience and know that I have the pre-release item so you might have some of the accessories with an improved version. Guess I was something like a beta tester, although it is all so complete and bug-free that it can easily qualify for a well-settled product. Inside the package you're gonna find the camera and a box with the accessories, excellent long USB cable mini USB standard, the charger, there's an optional hardware kit that supports parking mode when the engine is off, and like the first generation, two different mounting types, one that is suction cup based and one that is tape based. The technical specs are promising. Processor is Novatec 9660, which is used with many great action camps from a couple of years ago. The image sensors are both Sony, the 2 megapixel IMX307, which is known for large pixel size and good low light performance. There's an optional GPS, 2 inch display, G sensor based parking mode, and Wi Fi. Field of view of the lenses is 132 degrees horizontally. So far, on paper, this all sounds great. Let's carry on with the installation and the preparation for the continuous usage. Easiest way to mount is to stick to the windshield. You can use one of the screen folios, which will make a possible adjustment or removal afterwards much simpler. You know that double-sided tape is not easy to get removed from glass. Because both cameras are on the main body, there only is one power cable that you need to take care of. Find a convenient way from the cigar lighter to the main unit and make sure to hide the cable. There's a Pry 2 to help you with that if needed. The B2W model may be ordered with optional GPS module, which has a stereo plug-like connector and is one more wire to place. The better visibility to the sky, the quicker the GPS is going to lock. I've sticked mine at the upper side of the windshield and it sometimes locks signal within just 5 to 10 seconds. The module adds additional information to the footage, like the speed, location and accurate time and it creates a track record on a separate file which you can review on a PC or a Mac at a later stage. I mentioned at the beginning that there's a hardwire kit. It can be optionally ordered. I usually prefer hardwire kits which are installed as a fuse. Perhaps the simplest way for a non-technical guy to install on his own without messing things up. To initially configure the camera, you better use the hardware buttons. Menu settings are not overwhelmingly many, so you can certainly find the things that you need and the things that need to be adjusted. There are a few resolution choices, the possibility to fine-tune the picture, to choose the camera modules that are active and some extra config settings. Also, the overall operation of the dashcam is very convenient and that includes enabling or disabling the rear module just from these buttons. They are well placed and with good functional implementation. I liked a lot the extra large button that lets you mark a video as emergency. This can come very handy when trying to highlight a file. For example, you spot someone driving at red lights and you want a video not to disappear among the many other files, just press the button and you can afterwards get the file from the emergency folder. Let's go ahead and inspect the performance. Audio comes first. Hi, here's an audio test recorded with the Blue Sky CB2W from inside the vehicle I'm currently driving with around 
50 kilometers per hour or 33 miles per hour and that's the kind of quality and sound levels you could expect recorded with a dash cam. The video quality is well balanced, sharp and detailed, surprisingly good values the total bitrate can reach, up to 24 megabits for both modules, which you can split between the front and the rear one, either equally or give precedence to the front module, up to 16 megabit, which is 30 to 40 percent more than an average dash cam in this class, and the detail amount is greater. Objects are well visible, even at a distance, and you have no problems seeing the car plates under most light conditions. Because of the good image sensor choice, the low light performance is also at a decent level. All that is recorded at 1080p, 30 frames per second, but if you disable the rear module, you can count on up to 60 frames per second as well. If we get a closer look at the secondary camera which records the car interior, we can share similar thoughts. It's actually quite good and capable of giving you plenty of details. Guess these devices may be a booster to vloggers that prefer to talk to their audience while waiting in traffic jams. Who knows? During the night, you will watch black and white videos with possibility for enabling the special IR cut filter that can help for improving the image and reduce the distortions which are caused by the infrared. Daytime videos are recorded with normal colors. Parking mode is there too, and it is a convenient way to know that surveillance will be there when you're not around the car. With a note though, the B2W needs a few seconds to wake up from sleep should the G-sensor get triggered, which means that it might actually miss the whole accident. As for connectivity, we mentioned Wi-Fi and the app used is third-party called Roadcam and it has everything necessary. You can see the menus yourself. I usually don't need to use the Wi-Fi option on my dash cams too often, but if that's something that you are more interested at, let me place a link to the app in the description right below this video. And that, that you already see, happens entirely offline using a PC to have a look at the GPS routes. I think Blue Sky C did pretty well with their second generation of a dash cam. Everything typical and important for 2019, maybe except the 265 encoding, which is not supported by the processor, but in return you've got the car interior being covered by a second cam module, all that integrated in the same body, which you can easily install and adjust if needed. And support for cards up to 400 gigabytes, remarkable. With low power consumption, excellent video quality for both modules, and all that at a price below $140, and you may use the special discount code to get yours with a smile. Special thanks to Blue Sky C for trusting our expertise and setting an early unit for testing. It's been a pleasure and privilege to have you around in the last few minutes. Let's catch up in the next episode. My name is Michael, and I wish you a wonderful day.